Empire. It's February 5th, 2023, Raptors Grizzlies. And here we have sitting courtside Raptors superfan Nav Batia keeping a close eye on T. Morant, John Morant's dad, who, you know, the family's been involved in a series of wacky pranks recently. And uh, Nav was there to just make sure, you know, no funny business was going on against the Toronto Raptors. And it's not the first time the two have hung out. Uh, Nav abandoning his uh, signature chair quite famously earlier in the season to sit with a one T. Morant. And the two seem to really share quite a camaraderie a special kinship, you know, two peas in a pod. So about five minutes into the first quarter, man with a black hoodie arrives, but he's not tight enough to get Nav's seat to sit next to T. He's going to keep him at an arm's distance. And uh, here Nav and T, they're just stargazing into the same universe. And here's T standing up, you know, he's fired up. Him and Nav would both kind of stand up, obviously, at different times. They're cheering for different play- different teams. And I uh, hear they're having a great time together. Their arms wrapped around each other. They're just having an amazing time together. Like, I don't have this bond with anybody. And uh, John Moran's dad, T, real name Demetrius, you know, he's a sunglasses indoors guy. He's got the pop and vigor of an Eric Flynn. But unlike Raptor Nation, my man sits up close. He's right there in the flesh. And, uh, only a few days before this game, of course, he got into it with the unit, Shannon Sharp, at a Lakers game. And, uh, you know, much like uh, Jaw, birth name Jarence, Demetrius has an image he wants to cultivate. And uh, it's not that Jarence's parents have a real good marriage type of image. It's actually the opposite. I mean, here we got him featured in the badass adult prom. And uh, badass spelled with two Zs, you know, just in case. Got Jarrett's making a video with Johnny Dang, Paul Wall's personal jeweler, and uh, he was making crazy faces like he was Buffalo Bill, who just got the lotion in the basket. And uh, earlier this year, John and his crew involved in an NBA investigation into a laser pointer pointed into a team bus, and uh, yeah, there was NBA investigation came back negative. They said John and his friends they're just they're just hardcore pranksters. They got they got their hands on a couple of laser pointers and went ham. The investigation uh, also found that him and his buddies got a couple of burner phones and were asking people if their fridges were running. And then there was the Washington Post story with the 17 year old boy where Jaw had to defend himself. I think he used a water gun in that one. And like tonight, this was a close, intense game that went right down to the wire. And, you know, it's just great that uh, Nav was there just just to make sure that the Raptors, you know, could go off and could do their thing without fear of retribution. And then, of course, the uh, wacky April Fool's Day prank where... uh, Jaw's mom didn't get her way at the shopping mall, so she called Jarrett's and his friends to come down and settle a couple things. And, uh, you know, speaking of Jaw's mom, Jaw's birth is actually cited as the reason why uh, Demetrius is not a household NBA name, stating in multiple interviews that he gave up an NBA career to be a dad. You know, really, the I guess the reverse Carl Malone. You got to respect that. Uh, but now, ironically, uh, Jaw seems to be on a mission to get himself out of the league. And uh, Jaw's defenders will say, you know, Jaw's young. He's only a few years older than his daughter. Or they'll say, like, it's the people around him that are the problem. It's his dad. It's his friends. And, you know, my answer to all this is, like, maybe the Grizzlies should have just stayed in Vancouver. You know, as a Vancouver resident, like, I'm pretty sure, like, Jaw pulling a gun out with me and my friends, like, smoking weed at the beach with our kombuchas. Like, that's going to be a social faux pas. It's not Memphis. I don't think it would be a smash hit here. You know, people, it's different. Like the culture is different. We kill ourselves slowly through loneliness and depression, which is kind of a harder road in my opinion. Joe also recently signed with Powerade, the Sugarwater Giants biggest athlete signing ever. And I mean, the timing on this couldn't have been better. Just a few days after the ink is dry, my man goes on a Plaxico Burris style run with a video in a Denver strip club, having the time of his life after losing by only 16 to the Nuggets. Jaw's good in the West. And uh, a lot of people, a lot of media people screaming out about this video. And for me, the video is just like, it's Jaw silently saying like, please love me. I need you to love me. My father wore sunglasses to the maternity ward and now whatever I do, whatever I accomplish in life will never be enough validation. And, you know, dad blames his failure on never reaching the NBA on my birth. And so his love is kind of conditional, kind of based on my success. And so it'll never be free of expectation. And none of my accomplishments will fill the giant hole I have in my heart. So I will subconsciously sabotage all of my opportunities just to avoid the rejection of knowing my motivations aren't really mine, but just the distant projections and lost dreams of a man named Demetrius. And so, yeah, I'm just happy that Nav is out there, you know, keeping the Raptors safe, you know, keep your friends close and your enemies even closer in prison you are somebody's bitch
Oh, and you. You, my friend, would be the belle of the ball. Don't drop the soap. Don't drop the soap. Did you learn all of this? Internet. So not prison. And prison, it's 50-50. Both. Look, prison stinks, is what I'm saying. It's not like you can go home and recharge your batteries and come back in the morning and be with your friends having fun in the office. What'd you do, Prison Mike? I stole and I robbed and I kidnapped the president's son.